Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Camille Trent. We're working on polar bears again today. This time it's a mommy and a baby bear. And this is a simple, easy tutorial. I'm going to give you the drawing on it. And it's basically three, four colors, mostly blues. And that's that. So let's get started. All right, so first, of course, I always do my drawing lesson. Um, I can't always do it, but I try to do it as much as I can. So for the baby bear, I put him like a little, um, almost like a half circle and curve line up here, swing it down, curve line back here for his legs, curve it down, a bump like that, and his arms like that, a little nose, eyes, and the mouth. And then for the mama, curve line, I'm gonna put her leg, back leg like this and her head like that we'll have her nose her ear and her big leg front leg like that and then the body back leg back leg little tail little feet land well snow and there you go that's the drawing. Now we'll go on to the painting. Okay, for supplies, I have my Arches Cold Press 100% cotton paper. I have my little palette here. Various colors we'll be working with. Ultramarine, Payne's Gray, uh, Indigo Blue, maybe some Burnt Umber over here mixed in, and I put some Blackish Gray here. Um, and the consistency will be pretty wet like this. And uh, various brushes, but I think I'll mostly work with my typical Grumbacker 10 and 2 today. I had bought a bunch of new brushes that I'm going to do a um, tutorial on, uh, different round brushes from Princeton that I'll show. But for now, I'm just going to do the simple ones because it's close to Christmas and I'm very limited on time. I know a lot of people have been commenting that I like your talking videos better than demos. Well, me too, but it's very difficult to do them every single day. I can only do them so often. So especially now with the holidays and then getting ready to go get my son who uh, is going to be graduating from boot Marine Boot Camp on January 3rd. So that being said, um, let's get started on the polar bear. So I'm going to put some water on my brush and I'm going to grab some of the ultramarine mixed in with a little gray and I'm dab it on my paper towel. So I do a lot. I'm going to put the paint on the brush. Sometimes I just dab it on the paper towel to make sure it's not too. I'm going to start very lightly painting. Let me zoom in. The shadow from the baby bear. And then just get that wet and pull it down. You can do, if you don't want to do blues, you can do more browns. I'm going to grab some burnt umber. And throw that in if you want to mix it mix the two the leg behind will be darker for the shadow but we're going to keep this uh, polar bear fairly white because they are white just hints of the color you can see that little hints because the negative space out here will paint blue and then you'll see the shape of the polar bears. So they'll have color inside of them and then there'll be color around them. Positive negative space. Just lightly sticking the color in around the edges. I you know personally think it doesn't really matter if I'm talking or not. Um, you see, I'm a visual person. I look at demos a lot that are not speaking. So that's just me. Maybe people have to be verbal about it. I see what they're doing. But some people learn that way and some people learn what directions. Everyone learns differently. 
since I'm a visual person, that's how I learn. See, I'm just moving the color around the body. So light, so it's even hard, like even if I zoomed in, well, you can kind of see more. It's just faint. It's not that much color. We're building here. Building layers. And the back leg here. It's kind of wet on wet, but I didn't get the whole thing wet. I'm keeping it loose by keep adding water and so here's the baby. Putting color on him. Could be her. Could be whatever you want. Just going around the edges of the body that we drew. What I do is fill it in, and then if I think it's too much, I take it away with the belly of the brush, as you can see. So it's not much you can really see because it's very light, but I'll add some with the tip of the brush. This brush is very versatile. I'll go back in and add some darker tones. See, see that? It's building. You want you don't want to go full guns blazing. Well, you could, but. Sometimes you have to get a feel of how you want it to look. The colors are looking the way they want them to. That's why building helps. If you go full guns blazing and you don't like it, then you have to start over. You take your time and slowly do it. Then you might like it and you won't have to start over. Putting a shadow with a little baby guy is and then I'll be putting a shadow behind the, the leg behind the little leg and here I'm using a combination of the ultramarine and indigo mixed together but super light again with this back leg over here and the tail I'm grabbing some water from my jar and then pushing it around So I'm still playing with this building as I go along. Put his little arm there. Now I'm making this a little darker with the tip. Adding the blue. There we go. At this point now I can do the negative space so I feel comfortable how it looks. If you want to add, a, take some really water down crimson or red or pink whatever you have dab it on your paper towel see i i get the paint and i dab it here and then i come back in and put a little rosy cheek and i have to actually add some more water and dab it on paper towel on the baby you can put one on the mom if you want but i think just on the baby signifies it's a baby obviously it's baby because it's smaller so the negative space, you can go light or dark however you want it. I'm gonna probably mix the indigo and the ultramarine, getting it fairly wet. See right here, adding some water to it. In my first polar bear, it was more ultramarine. This is some, oopsie, I made a mistake. A piece of, one piece. A splat of watercolor got on his leg her leg. So I'm going to get water on that and keep taking it away with my brush and putting on paper towel. And then it goes away. you got to kind of catch it quickly though. There's another one. I don't know why that splattered there too. And I'll do the same thing. Get it wet with the water, moving around, hit my paper towel. There. All gone. All right. Negative space. I'm not going to hit polar bear just yet because it's still wet but I'm doing the negative space this is fairly loose and it's going to dry lighter so if it still seems too light for you just keep adding it on top of it building the layer 
just like so. This is almost monochromatic with the blues, which is pretty. This would be really pretty for a baby nursery. A baby gift card. Someone had asked me um, in one of the comments about copyright. Copyright becomes an issue when you copy it exactly and sell it for commerce. Like my tutorials are meant for personal use. If you want commercial use, you have to pay a licensing fee for that. Um, like most people who do art. Even um, typography that you see on the computer, it's free for personal use, but for commercial use, if you're selling it in commerce, you gotta pay a fee. Because artists make a living off their art. And if someone's stealing it and pirating it and selling it and they're making a living off of it, well then that's just not right. And that's it goes for photography too. I tell people all the time, like, just because someone took a photograph doesn't mean you can copy a painting. That is actual copyrighted infringement also. You would have to get permission from the person to use it. If not, you can't use it. Uh, henceforth, the big lawsuit with the Obama poster, the person who did the, it was a silkscreen poster, but it was derived from a photograph. So the photographer sued him and won the case, of course, because it was literally from his photograph. You can get inspired from photographs, which I have to do and everybody else has to do all the time. I mean, obviously you have to see photographs of polar bears, but then you have to completely change it. So when I'm looking for animals, I look on the internet for pictures of animals and then I have to, you know, do as much that looks like mine as opposed to theirs. So now I filled that in and now I can go back in and add the dark tunes closer to the body. I'm grabbing more indigo than ultramarine here and getting it right close to the body and it will bleed out because it's wet from putting all the other color down. And then another comment was um, their wet on wet technique doesn't look great on their paper. I'm gonna have to tell you that the best paper for wet on wet is arches. The other papers will make it look blotchy. I mean, it, you're not gonna get the same kind of pretty bleed that you will on an arches or, you know, a nice quality cold press paper. It's just not going to happen. If you're going to buy um, cheap paper, you know, to practice, which is fine, but you're not going to get the quality. I mean, that's why I basically eventually caved into all the arches. I was fighting it big time because it's pricey, you know. It's, I have to paint a lot for work. And you get, get expensive. I mean, I was shopping for supplies and People ask me, I'd love to show you lots of supplies. Next time I'll bring the camera and the video phone to the store. But paints have gone way up. I mean, some of these whole buying gouaches that I have here. These are $9 a tube. Some other colors are $23 a tube. So starving artists, yes. <laughs> Why? Their paints cost a fortune. Okay, let's see. That looks good. I might bring it down here. So I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna add some more dark indigo around the baby. It just really pops because you have the darker value next to the lighter value. That's why I say all the time to have more values of tones of leaves in your flower paintings. And if you put the darker next to the light, it's just going to make it pop. If you don't want that look, you know, you want a more muted look, you don't obviously do that. But this is a night sky. I think I'm debating whether to stick it under here too. I think I might put a little bit.
And we'll just show off the polar bear better. See this one brush I'm getting using the point and in the belly of it. That's why these ones are really good. There's another really good brush I bought. This is a Princeton 12, but it's very pointy. So it's a different kind of scenario. So we painted that negative space. We're going to go back into the positive space and put some light uh, ultramarine, very pale. Some of the little indigo for the shadows because now it's nighttime and they're going to have little shadows from their feet with the moonlight. I could put a moon there. I did, could have left it white, but I didn't. You're just assuming that the moon's there. Shadow under the body. Put a little darker indigo in there. Putting next to the feet. Mm, working fairly quickly here. With the so you get this idea that there's a shadow, and I'm going to put the more. We're going to build a shadow up here again on the baby. On the mom. And still looking too pale, so we're going to add some more darker values in here. That's why you build. You're not seeing the definition of the leg behind the body, so we're going to fill that in. Might add some gray with this. Same thing with the leg in the back. gray over here. You just keep building your shadows. If it bled a little bit, that's okay. The feet. And keep pushing this out. Adding some gray here. And the ears. I'm gonna put a little pink in the ears. Up here. Now I'm gonna go back in with this section right here, even though it's supposed to be white, just give it a hint blue, the snow. It's pretty pale. Compared to the blue behind, it should be darker because it's shadow. You can even make it more gray if you don't want to make it blue. Add in some darker black or peanuts gray. Really indicating that it's a shadow. See how dramatic that got? The darker it got. Same thing with the behind the leg here. I just keep building until I feel satisfied that I think it looks good. If I don't, I'll just keep going on. I want to get a little darker under the baby bear. It's not dark enough. And then his little arm. And then I'm going to bleed some color in here. Get it wet really wet and wash it. You can hear the paper make that noise because it's got this tooth to it. The cold press has a tooth, the hot press does not. It's very
very smooth different kind of paper altogether I have some of that I was going to start doing a floral tutorial the other day but I reneged because I don't think people are interested in that right now I will be doing lots of those coming up again just building Building, building, building. Till you feel satisfied that you've got it the way you want it. I'm gonna add a little more. Trying to find this other front paw. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with my Grumbacker 2. And work on the nose and the eyes. You can use black, paints gray, whatever you feel like. And you can make his eye like closed, the baby eye if you want, or keep it open. Just gonna do the little nose. Eye. His little nose, sweet smile, happy as a clam bear with his mommy bear. And then the air is going to have to have some definition because with just a water down that black or gray and then show the air. Same thing with here. So you see the air. Again, play with it if you want to put like a winter scarf on it or whatever. And then for the snow, obviously, I have my gouache. Now yesterday, I gotta find my gouache. I had it right here. My, oh, here we go. I lost the cap, so I had to put tape on it. <laughs> what we do. and hopefully it didn't dry out. And I think it did. So I'm gonna have to use the gouache that I have on my board. That's okay, and reconstitute it, which is basically like watercolor, you just get it wet, which I'm doing. See the gouache right here, my little brush. Then this one you can put in the snow where you want it. You can do the splatter method you can add real snowflakes. Since it's squashy, you could put the moon there because you can go right on top of this color. You don't even have to have snow um, if you want to keep it not so winter. I mean, obviously, it's a polar bear, it's winter. But if you want to keep it more neutral for like a nursery, I would just paint the colors without adding the snow. But since we're in winter and it's almost Christmas, I'm going to add the snow. Very simple, just a few colors for this tutorial. And like I said, if you want to embellish it, add things to it, subtract things to it, have them walking on something else, like ice, an igloo, whatever works for you. Just playing with this little brush and making lots of little snow. It's good to have some splotchy, bigger ones tiny ones. I didn't do the splatter method because I didn't want the snow on them. I wanted them in the forefront and the snow in the background. And then again 
his feet and her, his feet. I'm gonna go back in and add just a little details on the paws. And if you want more definition in the body, you can go around and um, just put like a little thin line of the black or the gray indicates the polar bear. Like so, really thin. If you feel like it's, you can't see the line of the, the bear. Just a thin line. And then you have the outline of the bear. So there you go. Well, I hope you like this one. Uh, please if, uh, like, share, and subscribe if you do. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye.